blood, there's a chance that it, he or she will fracture its radius or ulna. So a history of fracture of pair is not very successful, although with technological advancement, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> with technological advancement, we have been able to uh, successfully repair this if we follow a few principles, mainly AO principles. And you can definitely get some AO uh, training done by attending their webinars or uh, workshop. Hopefully we'll have another one in India. Okay, the other thing you uh, need to know is that when you repair this, there is a high incidence of delayed or non-union of these bone fragments. And again, we'll discuss those things. So first of all, they have weak bones. So small dogs and weak bones, they go side by side. So smaller diameter and also the lateral positioning of ulna causes problems. Plus their cranial caudally very flattened compared to larger breed dogs. So if you look at Great Dane's radius in ulna, if you CT scan that compared to this Chihuahua, it's flat less of a medullary canal compared to uh, the bigger dog, like almost like metacarpal or metatarsal bones. Again, the cross-sectional diameter of these bones are disproportionately small in toy breeds. Okay, so that all causes decreased area moment of inertia. We can study some physics here. We have to, as surgeons, we need to know some physics. So moment of inertia for a cylindrical object is important. More the diameter, stronger that, like fourth power to that. If the diameter reduces, it is a less and weaker construct. And then one of the important stuff to know is insufficient blood supply. That will make that bone dry. So we'll look at a few things. So here's some examples of cross-sectional distal radius in ulna. So you can see that um, on, on the left, there is a, a toy breed. And on the right, there's big breed dogs, radius on a distally cut, and you can see a slice. As you can see that there's less of a medullary canal in radius as well as ulna in a small breed. Now blood supply, not just periosteum blood supply in bone, I mean, bone biology is amazing. We can have another lecture on that, but the endosteum blood supply is the main. And of course the nutrient foramina goes in and supplies those. So if you don't have a nice, hefty, strong medullary canal, there'll be less of a blood supply. It will be only from the periosteum. So if you're looking for a periosteum, and if the blood supply is less, it's a double whammy. So let's look at some of those things. So why there's increased risk of delayed union or non-union in these dogs? Again, large breed dogs, open it, you put a plate, dog will heal pretty much good, even with casting, but I don't want you, you guys to do casting in large breed dogs. But in small breed dogs, it's always challenging. So again, small bone size, tendency of flexor muscles to create caudolateral fracture fragment displacement. It's very hard to pull that back again. Then high, high incidence of short oblique fractures. Now, when there is a transverse short oblique fracture, it's very, very difficult to put it together because every single time you're putting a screw, shear forces can move it and you will not be able to oppose it properly and there will be a translation deformity. Those kind of deformities are hard to correct because the real state is small. You're looking at about a centimeter or two. And then uh, all, all of these results in decrease inherent stability. So as surgeons, as, as veterinarians um, working there, we have to make sure that we provide ample stability for bone to heal and osteoblast and osteoclast do their job and uh, repair the fracture. So blood supply, done by one of my mentors here, Dr. Uh, Randy Boudreau in 1997. So basically took, took bones of small dogs and bigger dogs and injected India ink on the periosteum and looked under the microscope. So let's look at this just for visuals here. So up top is a toy breed. And if you look at the topmost, there's less of a black blackening of the periosteum. What that tells us is there's less blood supply. Now look at the below figure, the down by the side of this mastiff for a mixed breed large. Look at the blackening of the periosteum. So please remember, the periosteum also doesn't have a nice blood supply for a small breed dog. So now there's less of a medullary canal, weaker bone, smaller bone, 
less of a blood supply, it's all a recipe for failure. Bone will not heal if there's no blood supply, as we all know. We don't have to be carpenters here, like let's attach two fragments and put some screws and it will heal. No, a body doesn't work like that. Okay, so there is problems with stability and there's problems with blood supply. So what can we do so as surgeon? Again, this is quoted by my mentor here is that ideally we need both stability as well as blood supply. But if one is compromised, other must be enhanced. So now the blood supply is compromised here as we have learned so far. So stability must be uh, enhanced. I'm not saying that put a, a hefty plate, that would be a problem. So we have to put a plate and basically stabilize the fracture properly. So stay away from cast, the recommendation of casting or bandaging or even x fix we can talk about that. Uh, I'm not against x fix external fixators. All right, so now we've learned the pathophysiology, why this happens in toy breed or small breed dogs. Now let's look at some treatment methods and I'll be honest with all the treatment methods and I will share what I use. And of course, and there's no, uh, there's a lot of different treatment methods that can be used throughout the world as long as we are following the principles of orthopedic repair, it should heal. And unfortunately in these dogs, there's only one which is very successful and that's plating. So let's discuss a few things here. So in, in, in all, what we are trying to do here is create a proper stability. So this is a wrist joint of a human and you can see the plates being put and on the distal fragment, there are four screws. And then on the proximal, there's a first couple of screws there stabilizing it. So that's what I think we need to do and properly fix it. So there are different techniques where what we can use so external fixator, circular external fixator, and then different variety of plates. What are things that we should not do? Okay. Radius ulna. Please do not put a pin in radius. There have been reports. Still, I see some reports from uh, some parts of world that are being published that cross pinning or 12 pinning where uh, the pin is being put uh, right like a centimeter below and centimeter above the fracture line and then the cast. These are the methods shouldn't be used. Just let's use the most advanced technological method, which is usage of a proper plating system. So again, insufficient size, first of all, and there's no rotational stability with the pin. And then again, uh, the radius is so flat that you're so hard to put a pin. You'll probably end up in joint every single time. Can you pin an ulna in large dogs? Yeah, I do put pin in ulna. In small dogs, there's no majority canal. Figure out how to put a pin. Maybe you'll be putting a, a 22 gauge needle and that, that's enough for that ulna. But again, stay away from that. Cast and splint, it's a big no-no for me just because of poor stability, pressure source, and again, not healing. I am pinned with external supplement support. Yeah, worst of both worlds. So these are all wrong ways and wrong treatments. What treatment methods are commonly used and being published in journals are external fixator or circular external fixators and then the place. Let's look at a few examples. I just don't want this to be a super basic, we are all, here to learn so it's always good to read some articles and and be abreast of new knowledges or, or the new techniques being discussed in the very world so fixation pin diameter needs to be maximized to increase stiffness strength correct you need to put a bigger fixation pin to stabilize it now that's why i think i'm not i don't like this method but again it's a viable method and anybody can use it if he or she is trained in that but again, I'm limited by the size of bone. So if pin size is greater than 20, 30% of bone diameter, uh, that is a problem, right? And then small size of radius in toy breed, that's, you're using teeny pins and that doesn't give you good stability, but still can be, it's doable. So this all construct, uh, again, results in exceedingly small pins or K wires which uh, to, in my experience hasn't helped me uh, to properly fix or repair these fractures. So I stay away from that. Well, let's talk about circular external fixator, a little bit better 
And you can use tension, tension wires to get proper alignment and app position. I see a problem here is uh, a lot of rings. And in a small dog, you're putting the rings, it's just uncomfortable for the dog, for the pet parent to manage it properly. And, and dogs are dogs, guys, we all know. I mean, they will do their own funny things. I and mean, you can't tell them like, okay, don't lick or run around. They will, mess, they will try to make sure that you, your repair fails. So we have to be smarter than dogs. But again, not that you can't use this method. It's, it's published, you should be able to use it. But again, many, many, uh, I would say, um, limitations. We're gonna have another lecture on the whole circular external fixators on, on tibia I use and for angular limb deformity I use or, or, or different other advanced methods. So uh, published in 2011 in uh, VCOD, you can read about this study, a pretty good study uh, and has shown a healing. I'm not a fan of this. What I like is plating. And uh, in small breed dogs, I open it and then I put a plate. I don't do minimally invasive techniques in small breed dogs. And it's a big no-no in my mind. Uh, I've been teaching this course for almost like eight years now. So I do not promote minimally invasive surgery for small breed dogs. So let's talk about plating. Currently available plates, I think, have sufficient stiffness and strength to properly fix these fractures. And these are some examples right there. I'm unaware of the plating system uh, back home. Uh, you guys can teach me, that would be great. Uh, but here I use Dipusynthes plating system. There are many others. My uh, main practice with these is a locking compression plates. It's a hybrid plate, so I can compress the fracture as well as lock it. But again, you can use any kind of plate. A normal uh, DCP is, uh, can be used also. I think it's an old technique and hence uh, I do not recommend it. Instead, a limited contact DCP would be better. It will save some periosteal blood supply. Again, you have to be careful about soft tissue. That's where the surgical skills are. If we can save the soft tissue, bone will heal. Okay, so um, now, I know there will be a question that these plates are flimsy, like really small. Many of times uh, in, in like less than one kilogram dogs, I see I, I have to use the finger plating system from humans and I use that. So right now, what you can do is since they're small and flimsy, I think still they have adequate stiffness. You can use a longer plate or you can pin the ala, or you can double plate it or your combination of plate and ESF. These things can be done. My uh, methodology is to use a longer plate. That gives you nice working length and it also reduces the stress fracture or stress risers at both ends. And we'll discuss that in detail. Very, very important to understand why to use a little bit more longer plate than normally recommended or being done for 30, 40 years. So I've changed that last like eight, nine years practicing uh, or fixing these small dog breeds. Okay, uh, many reports are published. This is one of the newer ones. You can uh, read about it, uh, done by Gibbert uh, from France, as well as Tufts, where I was uh, educated or trained. It's just showing a locking plate system. This is not a small breed dog, guys. It's a bigger dog, but I just wanted to pull this to show you that with locking plate system, you can definitely use uh, and get the fractures fixed easily. So they had this report of uh, 20 fractures and use locking versus non-locking and hybrid. The results were pretty good, everything healed. So the point I was trying to make is that you can use locking plate system as hybrid fixation, or you can just use a general plating also. I'm not trying to drive all of you to go and use just the locking system. But again, for us, for humans, if the new technology is available, why not we should use it? We should, if it's going to cause more efficiency and better healing. And hence I use locking plate system, not just because it's very fancy. Of course it's fancy. Okay. So we'll do some case examples and there's some videos here and there um, just to show you a few things. Um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So this is a one and a half year old puzzle mix. I mean, puzzle is a mix, so it's puzzle mix mix. Presented to us with radius on a fracture. 
ओके हाय एवरीबॉडी टुडे हम लोग आर यू फ्रैक्चर रिपेयर करेंगे एंड आई विल वॉक यू थ्रू दैट एज वी डू द लेक्चर ओके सो हियर इज द रेडियस अल्ला सो यू कैन एक्चुअली सी इट्स फ्रैक्चर प्रीटी नीट क्लीन इट्स अ इट्स अ ट्रांसवर्स ओब्लिक लाइक अ कॉम्बिनेशन आई विल कॉल इट एज अ ट्रांसवर्स फ्रैक्चर बट शॉर्ट ओब्लिक कुड बी कंप्लीटली फाइन so pre op measurements are done so even so i graduated residency in 2012 and 8 9 years of practice or being a resident in 2009 so you can say that i have a, almost a decade of surgery experience i still to date for every single surgery i measure every single screw that's a habit and pre planning is very very important right somebody said that not a uh, proper planning is always needed if you don't plan it you're planning yourself to be failing in the surgery suite so i always plan so that's what you can see on, on the right side that i've already measured some screws like where the screws will be going and what's the length of that here my patient had to the dog we will place a tool plate and fix the fracture okay So as it's getting ready so um, I'll just show you, show you some setup right here the actual surgical process what we do we if vet in i is um, or can sponsor we can have a real fracture real time fracture repair at some point in time in future so the stage is set and uh, we'll go ahead and do the repair so normally this is muscle muscle so show right here so normally this is the setup right there the drill and then of course we are using this mini fragment set and most of the dogs they will get a 20 screw set so we'll go ahead and do the repair and go from there so this is our setup right here and you can see we can pan all around so that's the surgery setup and if if vet in our you guys want to see something re, like a real time surgery we can arrange that at a future date all right see you. Okay, so the patient is all set, draped. Um, now that I have all, the assistant already, uh, that person behind me is here just to learn. She's interested in orthopedic surgery, a local veterinarian. So I just invited her to come uh, see the fracture repair. All right, so we are all ready. Uh, exposure is done, and now uh, we'll uh, put a plate. Jason, plate DJ, sir. Yeah, madam. Ah, yeah, wala. there is a again two or small plate pre stressing is so fracture is right here i'm going to bend it like that so just a one or two degree bend right here and then we'll slap this plate on the bone and it will get both cis and trans cortex properly okay i think this clipping is the most important of all the video clippings i showed you here so pre stressing for radius ulna fracture is needed and the the reason for that is if you just put the flat straight plate as your tightening screws the trans cortex will open up like that like a wedge so hence if you pre stress it both two of the fragments they just generally move a little bit more towards the plate and as they're moving they come close so cis and trans cortex will come together very well so it's important to pre stress So here's the fracture repair pretty boring surgery nothing special so we kind of like did three screws down and then uh above the fracture line we did like three more screws and it's a 7 uh, 8 hole uh 2 uh 0 plate special plate from synthes and um you know the fracture is being fixed this is 8 weeks post surgery by the way i take x rays at 4 weeks and 8 weeks compared to other surgeons just because if i have to intervene if something is going wrong i can intervene i know where where i am so here you go uh, it's repaired dog return back to normal life and that is the goal right that's why we are doing this so that that dog who makes our life easier and happier and loyal every single time can return back to its normal activity and do its doggy things that was a standard case but i think what we can learn more is looking at some case examples and complications and then we'll talk about how to reduce those complications okay so 3 year old cat's male toy poodle 
presented with a refractured left radius ulna. And I actually repaired the fracture uh, about two years ago. This is early in my career. So this dog jumps uh, from owner's lap and fractures the same leg, which was completely fine for two years. So this is our pre-op. You can see that I've plated uh, a, a normal LCDCP. The dog has grown a little bit, of course, but distally there's something going on. So as you can see that there is a fracture and we can, make a point right away, super easy, that there was a stress concentration at the bone screw interface, and that caused this fracture to happen. If this plate was long, maybe the fracture wouldn't have happened. Okay, so my question here is, is that in this case, what would be the method to repair an RU fracture? What would you do? Would you remove the implant and cast the leg? Would you remove the implant and repair with another plate? Or you remove the implant and repair with an ESF or no need to remove the implant, just plate on top of it. I'm not sure what you, you guys will do, but hold on. Um, so uh, Dr. Seema Tarukar. Yes, Dr. Jaya. Yeah, is ARS question ready for them to vote or shall we do it next time? No, we'll do it next time. Okay, good. So I'll just continue with this. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So in, in this uh, question, the most important thing is that we have to remove the implant and repair it on other plates. All right. So there is the repair right here. So what are the changes here? And you can see the changes I made. Immediately, I put a longer plate and it almost spans the whole radius from joint to joint. And I wasn't taking any more chances for this dog. I don't want this dog to be in pain because of my uh, less of a surgical skills or my surgical errors. That's not good. So I made sure that that plate is gone and then I put a bigger, longer plate and it healed completely well. Those screw holes, you can just leave them as is. And again, on this plate, I'm not filling all the screw holes. There's no need to. We can discuss a little bit more basic uh, fracture repair and uh, physics later. This is eight weeks post-op, healed beautifully. Dog is doing its normal uh, thing and making pet parent happy. So what did I use? A longer plate. So let's learn from this example. Again, not a surgical technical error, but I should have definitely used a longer plate. And I can argue that the dog was small and then the dog grew and hence the plate became small and it, it fractured. But anyhow, so that was post-op. So you must be wondering why I'm like showing this Apple iPhone ad here. Well, uh, Tim Cook is paying me nothing here, but this is what happened. So that phone fell on this guy and it's a six plus. This is about six, seven years ago or so. Six plus is actually a bigger phone than this tiny Yorkie. Well, let's look at this interesting case and learn from this. Okay. So four month old Yorkie presented with a radius on a fracture, the pet parent accidentally drops his iPhone on him, and then dog yelled, of course, immediately lame in the left front. So post-op, the dog came and then the fracture repair was done. It's a DCP and I didn't do this fracture repair. Uh, I saw this dog later. This was done by a surgeon and the dog went ahead and actually healed. So this is six week post-op. You can see that implant is stable and healed. There's no lameness. Dog is running around doing its normal activity. So again, this is repaired by a DCP plate, as you can see. We can talk about different kinds of plating system or basic plate biology and uh, uh, mechanics later, but this is a flat underneath or under cut of the plate. That's why it's a DCP and two screws down, two screws up, fracture in between, healed. Two months later, Mr. iPhone dog is running around playing with the housemate cat. And look at the cat, bigger than this dog. And then cat and them, they probably got in the boxing match or something, I guess. The dog became lame again. So he's presented to our ER and I'm a surgeon there at that point of time in that hospital. 
So here is a fracture. I mean, let's 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 look at this fracture for a few seconds. I'm just gonna like zoom in. So you can see that there is a small amount of almost like non-displaced green stake kind of proximal fracture right there. What would I do right here? So the ER clinician, by the way, I want all the doctors to practice their medicine and if they need my help, I'm always available to be there, but I'm not a dictatorial surgeon that I'm gonna say, no, 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 you have to do this and blah, blah, blah. So for this, I did say the right thing to be done. What is the right physiologic things to be done for this dog, but wasn't done. But anyhow, in this, at this point, for this iPhone dog, what would you do? Remove the implant and cast the leg. Would you remove the implant and repair it another plate? Or well, there's no need to remove the implant and just cast the leg and no need to remove the implant, just plate on top of it. So various options, some of them are completely wrong. So in my mind, it should be taken to surgery, remove, we remove the implant and repair with another plate. That wasn't done. The ER clinician chose to take uh, the step number three as option three, where he put a, a cast on the leg. There you go. So bivalve fibroblast cast, let's say restrict his activity and then say return in four weeks. So dog actually healed, which is good news for dog and uh, the iPhone owner, I guess. So uh, four months later, Mr. iPhone dog is playing again. At this point, the cast is of course removed. He's a free man running around, goes to a play date one evening and then returns home with this lameness in the same operated leg. Not good. It's too much of jumping, I guess. So this is now 10 month post the first surgery, the second intervention where the casting was done. So here is the fracture. Now, previously it was a proximal fracture. Now it's a distal fracture. So, so you can see how this plate is playing with the bone, right? Plate is the boss right here, not good. Bone should be in charge, not the plate. So this is 10 month post again for so you, you have a distal fracture. But look at this though, this is a um, compilation of the fracture in the same leg. So this is like right before fracture. So I, I picked the other leg right there on the left side, very, very straight, like normal radius on my right, nothing special. The first repair was done by a surgeon, kind of like healed, but then I came back with the proximal fracture in, in the center, which was repaired with the casting. You can actually see, see the shadow of casting on, on the dog. And then 12 months later, he fractures again at the distal. The important thing to note, uh, most of you have noted, is the radius was straight. Look what we have done to this dog. We made its radius in a reverse C. Not good, not cool, right? It's our mistake that we did not follow the proper AO principles and now dog has a deformed leg. So again, now we have to practice proper orthopedics. By the way, at trivia, orthopedics is not fracture repair. Orthopedics means straight child. That's how it was originated. Anyhow, so now you have a reverse C. So dog's leg is completely valid. The other leg is straight and this is like completely on a different direction. What would you do? Would you remove the implant and stabilize with the external fixator? Would you remove the implant and replate with a longer plate? Or would you remove the implant and correct the deformity, the angular deformity, and then replate with a longer plate? Or, you know, just go back to casting. What would you do? Well, the best answer here is do the right thing. The right thing would be to remove the implant, correct the deformity, and replace it with longer plate. So I started looking, this is a small dog, a really small dog. So I started looking into different systems and then called one of the industry uh, connections for me here in the US. And I said, can I use that finger plating system? And fortunately dog was insured. Most of the dogs here who come to see me, uh, of 
for a fractional pair, guys, are about like four or five thousand dollars. So again, it is four to five thousand dollars to repair fractures. And I'm fortunate that I work with dogs here. Either they are um, insured by smart people, or people can pay out of pocket. So I got this one five modular uh, LCP system. Normally, I place two systems. So this is one notch down, so fifty percent down. So one point five modular system. Actually. Um, and how much it would cost? I think the total surgery, once everything said and done, was about thirteen thousand dollars with all the repairs and everything. I'm actually wanted to uh, say uh, to Vet Ina that I was actually on your website for Pod Tech and Seaman because I was impressed and I'm actually very happy that there's something like this going on that you can protect your like pets back home. And it's very exciting uh, that you have had this. Actually, I read through all of this perfection plan and it's pretty uh, doable. And again, whosoever came up with this initiative in India is just amazing. All right, back to our case. So this is what I did. I measured, did some math. Math is important for life, I guess. So I corrected the deformity. So I knew that I could do a medial closing wedge uh, correction. So I took a triangle out, there you go, and then made it straight and then put a plate. So this is the post-op right here. So that's pre-op on the left and post-op uh, on the right. So you can see, and uh, now it, the joint is straight. So um, again, uh, I think uh, that was needed in this case. I did use some bone graft in this case because I had to cut the bone and on the different cortex, it wasn't opposing properly, especially the online. So this is two months post-op, healed well, dog is back to its normal acting. But look at this, it's a longer plate. Again, this plate is very thin, but dog was small also. And then if you look at the distal screw, it's right at the joint. So what were the changes I did uh, during this? So first surgery, to the revision surgery was, I corrected angular limb deformity. I used a longer plate and I used a locking compression plate. I will not be using a standard plate in this case because I'm doing osteotomy. I want that to be compressed really well and heal well and I want a good stability. So let's look at a little bit more bigger dogs which uh, we can see um, they run around. These are specific Italian Greyhound. Now these dogs, a really a agile, athletic dogs running around, but they have chop, chopstick legs, like really small, <clears throat> and it can snap in, in, with less fracture, like less trauma or so. So okay, so this is a dog again repaired five years ago, not by Doctor Ja. I did not repair this, and this dog jumps down from bed and becomes lame. So here you go. This is pre-op. So look at this. You will learn through these complications that stress risers are important. So now the plate was smaller plate and was played a little bit more higher when the fracture was. It caused a stress riser and dog refractured. So what would you do here? Well, I chose that I'm gonna go in, we'll remove the implant, and then we'll put another plate. And this is many, many years after the fracture was repaired. Okay. So you can see that plate is almost from uh, the proximal, it's almost getting engulfed by the osteoblast and osteoclast. The bone is trying to be on the plate and that's how body repair itself. It's just a remodeling, standard remodeling, nothing special. So uh, I went in and I tried to remove the implant, but I think I would be causing more damage to remove the implant because it was so difficult to even find the screws. Everything was like white periosteum and I, it was so hard to see the screws. So I just plated on top of it, a different plating, a little bit more longer, and then go from there. Yeah, bone graft used for those screw holes here and there. This is eight weeks post-op healed, dog is doing well. So this is another one. Uh, it's a six-year-old uh, spade female Italian greyhound. It's quite an interesting case. So let's look at this. And after that, we'll look at some other things. 
So uh, the dog is non-weight bearing lame, radiograph shows RU fracture, previously pretty healthy right here. So look at the configuration of fracture. It's not a straight line. It doesn't have any T thing right there, but it's a short oblique sharp. Very, very difficult to compress properly. So every single time you try to compress, the shear forces move the fragments like that and will cause translation deformities. What are other deformities during the fracture repair and how to uh, fix those and how to avoid those? We can talk in a different lecture and hopefully we can have a series of lectures to exchange knowledge. And I'm, way, I'm excited to learn from you guys also. So standard stuff, dog is plated. I'm, I was pretty happy putting the, uh, the, uh, the screws are pretty distal and uh, close to the joint and it's a plate. I should have used a longer, longer plate, uh, not this much, at least 75% of the bone to be involved. That's my rule. It's not written in a book or so. So dog is doing well, eight weeks, eight weeks post-op healing, doing good, no issues. The dog is running around. This is two years later and dog becomes lame. And the RDBM, which is referring doctor, the general practitioner calls uh, the surgeon or the surgeon's office. And, and she was like, Dr. Jai, you have to see this. And I was like, mm, I've seen a few radius on a fracture. I don't, I'm okay. But what I'm saying is that these cases makes us humble. There's always challenges and we have to be prepared for that. This is what was happening, guys. So you can see the leg as a proximal and then distal, I'm holding it. It is turned into a 90 degrees. That's what is happening. So the plate failed at the fracture site, which wasn't healed properly. It was just somehow stable. And you can see complete elastic plastic deformation there. What would you do here? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You'll remove the implant and put on the plate, okay? So I removed the implant, so here you go. Plate was frayed beforehand, and now it's an L-shaped plate. So implant is removed. We decided to put an X-fix. It was a little bit bigger dog. The reason for that was there, the bone was thin just because of the plate and there were screw holes. We were afraid that it would cause problems. So here you go, a simple X-fix was placed. Dog is doing okay. We are dynamizing it. What is dynamization of fracture repair? You slowly uh, remove one or two screws or one or two pins for bone to take more load and heal quicker or properly. I do that a few times here and there in small dogs, especially even with the plates. So we're doing dynamizing, healing well, looks pretty neat and clean. This is four months uh, post second revision surgery. Dog is doing this. I was very happy. A problem is dog should not have been doing that. Dog started to limp again and presents a fourth surgery. So this is what is happening. Fracture through one of the pinhole. So again, that's why I do not use skeletal, uh, external skeletal fixer in small dogs. It's not that they don't fix or we don't get the repair, but it's just cumbersome, A, to me. And then there's always bigger holes left. I needed help also, again. I can do a lot of surgery, but sometimes I needed my mentor to help me. So this guy, Dr. Randy Bouja, I trained under him. Now he's retired. So he's a hardware happy man. He would like to plate almost all aspects of the bone. But again, a, a fun, phenomenal AO of bed faculty, my co-faculty I teach with him. I taught actually the course in India with him in 2012. But anyhow, this is what he did. So he put two plates one on the cranial, one on the medial, uh, and that's Alps plate system is a different Swiss plate system, like locking plate system, but it gives you a little bit more room for periosteum to heal. I do not use these, this system, by the way. So longer plate, double plate, and Alps plate system was used. Dar actually healed well, completely. Why Alps? Well, I ran out of the options, A, eh? and then the other plating system wasn't working, the ESF wasn't working, and I wasn't going to play it, uh, just a standard LCP. Uh, and these plates are lighter, they're titanium, and that's how they look like. They have only like tiny point of contact. And so they're specifically actually sitting right up, I would say about a millimeter or half a millimeter on top of the periosteum. And the contact is only 
two uh, sharp uh, points right by the screws. And this is how it looks like. But anyhow, uh, we don't have to uh, wait here. So this is about 10, 12 months later, dog is doing well. That was one of the difficult cases of my career. Okay, so having discussed all of this, do we have a solution? Yes, we do have a solution. It has been there for some time, but we did not recognize that. We continued to put uh, cast and using methods which will uh, cause more non-union or delayed union. So what are the key points? My key points are that please recognize specific attributes unique to the fracture of these distal toy and miniature dogs. And then remember that there's limits for uh, smaller implants. So stiffness and strength are compromised. And then we can think about advantages and disadvantages of standard was a locking plate system. So in summary points for the cases, a stable fixation is required. Make sure that you choose stability also, and then go from there. My preference is compression plate fixation. So how do you avoid complications? A few more slides and we'll be done. Gentle tissue handling. There's no replacement for this. I always say that we have to be the gardeners, not the carpenters. I mean, again, you can be the carpenter, open the bone, put a plate and forget about it. Yeah, it may or may not heal. But if you're properly handling, handling soft tissue, the bone will heal. We need to be respectful of that. Near anatomical reduction. So these are transverse short oblique fractures when you see the first. It's probably lock and key. So once you find it, please compress it really well and then put the plate. Avoid stress concentration. So that's why uh, it's important to control the plate. And then there should be any empty hole site on top of the fracture and then use a longer plate system. So uh, stress concentration can be avoided, especially on the cis cortex or the trans cortex is uh, by pre-stressing the plate. So see how I'm pre-stressing the plate and I was showing in the video that I'm gonna twist or turn the plate like that. And when you do that, since there's a gap between plate and bone at the cis cortex, as you tighten the screws, it will pull the trans cortex up and then it will uh, oppose it properly. Longer plate system, please try to use a longer plate system. There's no need to fill every single hole. If you're using a locking plate system, there should be only four cortices up and four down. I normally use still six, uh, six and six, even is with a normal plate. Stiff implants, you must be avoided. Do not use stacking plate system or just use, don't do like veterinary cuttable plate system and put like two of them. It's gonna cause problems. It will cause stress shielding, osteopenia, excuse me. <clears throat> osteopenia and then bone is not gonna heal just because plate is bearing all the weight, not good. And that's all osteopenic bone after a stiff, stiff implant. Several plating options available. I'm not the right person to talk about what's available back home. You guys can tell me and we can answer some questions. Use ORF as your first choice. What is ORF? Open reduction internal fixation. That's why AO vet or AO teaches. And I welcome you guys to check their website, become a member. You can communicate with me and get some more information from other surgeons also. <clears throat> I'm a board member faculty level in AOVET and write some policies here uh, for the whole United States. In summary, the weak bones will reduce blood supply are there in these dogs and or if is the choice of method, intervene early if needed, like what you saw in many complications. And again, follow basic as well as some advanced principles of fracture fixation, and that will help. And that will summarize. By the way, I'm a bandager. So to answer some of the questions, I will bandage these guys for two weeks. So that's about it. And uh, Seema, do I have to unshare and go back to you or shall I stay on my screen? Uh, you, can share. you can have that screen of yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I would say, to you, if there are any uh, messages or in, in the chat window, the questions, let's share some questions and then go from there. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jha, for this very 
uh, for this very knowledgeable and uh, uh, informative session then we'll uh, we'll go quickly go ahead with the question and answers there are many questions which have been uh, raised by the participants uh, first question is from dr navin reddy uh, he asked that when will you remove the plate okay dr reddy very good question so i'm actually looking at the questions also sorry he is also yeah. asked why didn't you prefer uh, i am pinning he has right. three As questions so i will i'll uh, quickly tell all uh, three questions of his first is when will you remove the plate second is why didn't you prefer the i am pinning and third is when should we go for the pop ca uh, casting so three questions okay. <laughs> all right doctor ready let me answer those things so and uh, i'm i'm not sure if you missed the the first portion of the lecture so first of all i do not do pop casting so plaster of paris or fibroblast casting is not recommended in small breed dogs when do you do that you can do it in a german shepherd a, a four or five month old german shepherd with mildly displaced radius on the fracture you can do that stay away from casting casting is a uh, care and maybe not even standard of care uh, and being doctors we should always look for gold standard of care and not just the simple standard of care so casting is not a good method so i, I do not do it casting so that's answer number 1 why didn't you prefer i'm pinning doctor so the reason for that is radius is cranial cordy flat and it has a pro curvatum so it's it's a kind of like mild c in in this plane it's not straight so if you're trying to put pin there is no entry point you have to open the joint opening the joint and putting the pin from there cause a lot of damage first of all you shouldn't be opening the joint because joint hasn't seen blood air your drill your pin it will have arthritis so i am pinning in radius is a big no no doctor ready do not try i am pinning do not do i am pinning you can try but you know it will not heal you can pin the ulna if you're doing a plate rod combination and again see ma for uh, for these different various methods we can have another seminar and we can talk about that yeah, the other thing was well, when would you remove plate doctor so that's a good question removal of plate depends on if it's infected or if it's causing tendonitis or desmitis then we can remove the plate otherwise i do not remove the plate it's dangerous to remove plate navin the reason for that is you need to remove the plate and leave empty screw holes it will fracture so i tend not to remove the plate there's no need to remove the plate by the way i have a radius fracture also and i have a titanium plate right here it's still there i don't want that to be removed not that i i walk on my arms but anyhow plus there are money aspects there but with you know uh, cmas and vicasas at first pot tech can actually help and um, you have I, i think pet parents can have some money to have that plate removed but again the answer is i do not remove plate unless it's infected next dr tarokar yeah which type of plate is best uh, nowadays uh so uh participant bc1 is 6940 i do not know actually what's available back home in india right what i showed in my slides where uh, what i use is a locking compression plate system so that has a figure of eight hole it known as combi hole so up top is a standard hole down below is a locking hole so i can use one of those and i like to compress the fracture for me it's a uh, Hold on. For me, it's one of these plates you can use, but I like to use this gold system right there, uh, which is um, it, it's a T plate, not T plate. That's my methodology of using it. I'm not sure if it's available. Again, locking plate system is something what you can use. Okay, Doctor Shridhar has asked. Hello. Are you yeah, able to hear Doctor Shridhar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Shridhar has asked two screws in the di uh, distal fragment. Is it the minimum re requirement? Okay. So, Dr. Shridhar, uh, good question. Um, answer is yes. And I would say, if you're using a locking plate system and you can put two screws, that would be fantastic. You don't have to use anything more than that. 
So if you looking at these plate systems, again, let me blow this up right here. So looking at these plate systems, you can see how the T plates are made. There are three screws down below so that you can use three. Now with science and technology, with some advancement, only two is required if you are using locking screw. Let me repeat this. If you are using locking screws. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why can't the plate be removed if it is causing damage to the bone after first time healing? In one no, of no, your, uh, yes, yes. Plate can be removed if it's causing damage uh, to the bone after first time healing. Now we need to define Dr. Nirupama, what kind of damages. Let's talk about one damage, for example, osteopenia. So you put a very stiff implant, a thicker plate, a bigger plate, and then bone doesn't take any weight. And uh, again, the basic path of biomechanism or biomechanics is Wolf's Law. So um, bone needs pressure to heal properly. Like if you go to gym and start uh, pumping dumbbells, your biceps will become bigger, right? So same with the bone. If you put a bigger plate and bone is not bearing enough weight, bone will, will become thinner. You must remove the plate, you must intervene. So you should be able to do that. If it's infected, you have to remove the plate. So uh, why can't the plate is removed if it's causing damage to the bone after first time healing? Yes, you should be able to do that. You, although let's say that everything was fine and then one of the case examples I showed where the plate was engulfed by the bone because of the remodeling, I wasn't able to remove that because if I was removing that, I would cause more problems to that bone. So I just played on top of that plate. But I used a little bit more thinner just because there was another plate over there. Again, very good question. And remember, this is a basic fracture repair, but a lot of advanced techniques and a lot of advanced sciences uh, and tips that you have to use. Just let's be a better doctor and better our surgeon for our patients. Very good. Next. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nirupama, for this wonderful question. Uh, now, next question is from Dr. Kalapure. How do you explain complication happened after orthopedic surgery? Dr. Kalapure, very thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Please. Well, first of all, I'm like very happy uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of work you're doing, Baba, and uh, continue your work. So uh, one of my classmates, guys. So let me explain. Um, so these complications in small dog breeds are because of our technical errors. So either you're putting a smaller plate or using a non-locking screw system, or you have not opposed those fragments properly. Or you know what? You told that owners uh, that dog is ready to run around and that will cause problems. So these are the things that I can tell you just in radius ulna fracture. Talking of complications in orthopedic surgery, we can have another lecture on that for 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. So the next uh, question is from Dr. Anjan, Anjan Kumar. Uh, his question is, is there any relationship between the length of bone and percentage of bone length for internal fixation? In the first case option, for fracture may be due to growth of radius ulna over two to five months period in relation to fixed length of DCB rather than other cause for displacement uh, leading to pathological fracture. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Dr. Sahu, you are right on the point. So, so you see these dogs as babies, uh, tiny puppies when they fracture, if you see those and then their length. So if the radius is only this much, let's say it's about three inches and you put two inch plate right there. You've done your job. Well, Dr. Ja said to do span bone whole length and you did that good. But as dog grows, plate stays right there, but the bone grows. Now plate looks small. It will cause stress risers and uh, will fracture it. So that was no escape right there for me or the surgeon who plated the smaller plate, but I think it was plate appropriately. But to answer your question, it's 75% of what I choose, that the bone should be in radius ulna or even in many other bones that I span if I'm doing the open fracture reduction technique. So answer is 75% of the bone length. So for example, right here, you can see on this, uh, hold on. Right here on this, you can see it's a longer plate being put, okay. I, I hope that answered. Yeah. 
keep going. Yeah. Um, the next, these uh, are good questions. Uh, from Sridhar, uh, Dr. Sridhar, is 75% yeah. length, uh, length of the radius to be plated? Is it only in small breeds or applicable or for large or medium breeds also? Okay, so I would say, uh, Dr. Ramela, it's uh, to me, it's for, for all the radius on that I try to do. In, in larger dogs, you can reduce that to 50%, but smaller dogs try to be longer, like 60 to 75%. You'll have, I mean, they have small radius and you can open the whole leg, um, like from joint to joint and slide the plate. Uh, so answer is yes, for large, medium and small, especially for radius, I'll not try to do that. The next question is, uh... Uh, there's no name on it, but the, is there any speci uh, special measures taken for uh, arthritic patients or diabetic patients, or is it the, in the medication post-operation? So arthritic, the, the radius online toy breed dogs is not because of arthritis. Okay, that could be a different lecture, uh, Dr. Anonymous attendee, I'm just kidding, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, for diabetic patient, that's basically the anesthesia. Bone heals well as long as it's contained and uh, you've followed AO principles. Medications post-op, uh, yes, you can use those medications for uh, them to heal. Uh, in general for arthritis, I just use a multimodal analgesia. So uh, an opioid and an anti-inflammatory, maybe a neuropathic like gabapentin or so. Uh, but if it's diabetic, of course, you will choose uh, other things for uh, diabetes to heal. But if it's diabetic and it is fractured, the first thing you have to do is repair the fracture. There's no way around it. And we continue to help dog heal diabetes. And that needs to be referred to an internal medicine specialist. I do not deal with diabetes. Uh, doctor, there are around uh, 23 questions. So, uh, and yeah, some more so coming in. So Let's, I would, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what so. we can do is uh, we can, uh, I can answer these. Maybe uh, what we'll do is see my Vikas, you can uh, send me these questions and I will answer these questions and send back to you and we'll go back. We can yeah. actually post in a normal common forum where people can come back and read because I'm actually uh, overwhelmed and uh, thank you very much for these many questions here. So um, we can continue later. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jha. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. Uh, over to you, Mikas, uh, Mr. Vikas Tana. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jha, for such a wonderful presentation. And, and, and certainly we are very uh, positive for seeing the response of the people. And uh, we, we simply we just uh, we, uh, announced our one uh, this information from all of you people that we should be continue such kind of session with the help of Dr. Jha in, in, uh, in future also. Right. Now it's just a time to introduce a molecule, which certainly a, a new revolutionary drug for the orthopedics. It would be the new beginning of the area to deal with the orthopedic cases. Right. So we have a wonderful uh, vets with us. It's a quite young vet. Dr. Shiva Varghese is there with us. And before introduction to Dr. Shiva, just let me do one special announcement for all of the people. We capped it up a lucky draw after uh, the analysis, completing of this webinar. And uh, we can play a one game where we can announce the uh, nominees of the winners of this uh, question answer session and the lucky draw contest. Yeah, so I request you to everybody, please be remain with the webinar till last and, and, and get the benefit of lucky draw of it. Certainly the things which you're going to introduce, certainly that would be more useful things for all of you people on day-to-day -day uses. It may be the clinic equipments which we are going to put it in a lucky draw, and who would be the lucky man? He will get it. Yeah. So now come to the point, Dr. Shiva. As Dr. Shiva yeah. is with us, Dr. Shiva is the veterinarian. She she has done his BVSC from Nagpur Nagpur Veterinary College, and later on she shifted to Bombay. She has done over this MVSC master degree in Bombay Veterinary College, and she has been associate with Swati from last four years, and under his guidance and knowledge, she developed the product like Pentrose Polysulfate. It's a pentosan polysulfate injection, which is a new uh, sub, uh, revolutionary drug for the orthopedic cases. So without wasting much time, I'll speak with Dr. I'll tell Dr. Call Dr. Shiva to come and give a presentation of this product. Yeah, Dr. Shiva, please. Thank you so much, Vikas. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'll just share the screen. Yeah.
Is the screen visible? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The screen uh, is visible. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Jha, for a wonderful session. It was really informative, and uh, I think our product would go hand in hand with the information you dispensed right now. Uh, so, not wasting any time, I would like to introduce to everyone our novel product, Pentos. So, the active ingredient of this product is pentosan polysulfate sodium. So just let us run through the introduction of how this molecule was developed by a, a company. So uh, pentosan polysulfate sodium was developed by Swati's Pentos. Uh, we are a human and veterinary pharmaceutical company, which was established over 50 years ago. And uh, we are uh, experienced in the manufacturing and marketing of pharmaceutical products in the niche category. We are one of the largest commercial manufacturers of pentosan polysulfate sodium API globally, apart from the originator. So we have the complete control and backward integration of the manufacturing of this material right from the raw material beach wood. So we are currently right now conducting many research work and many clinical trials with prestigious universities across the world. And a lot of global scientists are on board with our company to uh, get diff different, uh, different indications for this molecule. Right now, our key indications of this molecule for humans is interstitial cystitis. And for the animal and veterinary segment, it is osteoarthritis. So one of, and what stands us apart from the other companies currently is our US FDA approval site for our API site. And our progress with the US FDA on the subject of characterization, our patients benefiting in India and several other countries, we have been exporting for the past six years. So we export our API to many of the top players in the world who use our API and develop their own finished formulation for the osteoarthritic drug. As we all know, many of our pet parents are really concerned once their dog starts aging, that why is their dog limping or why, is they, why are they always in pain? So there is constantly concern running in their mind and constantly there are many questions arising as to what is the cause of these things. So there are multiple reasons why this could be, but one of the major reasons of why the dog is limping or in pain at a later stage of their life is osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is a leading joint disorder in dogs and it's been estimated to be seen in 30 to 50 percent of dogs are affected in some point of their life. It doesn't uh, require to be only in the later stage of their life. Many dogs even face this concern in an earlier stage of their life. Even hip dysplasia cases in, in younger dogs progress in later on in life to uh, cause osteoarthritic joints. This condition is a long-term degenerative condition and involves many tissues and cartilage and bone uh, together causing the different degenerative actions. The key symptoms which we observe in osteoarthritis is stiffness, lameness and the pain of the joint. So what could be the major causes causing this? So one of the major thing is age. As I said, age is one of the factors which cause arthritis. Many of the dogs in later stage of their life do develop arthritic joints, especially in their synovial joints. The other concern is larger breeds. So the, we have larger breeds means heavier dogs. So that causes more wear and tear of these joints. Thirdly, obesity. So heavier dogs cause more stress on the joint. Repetitive athletic activities, constant running, jumping cause more wear and tear. And if the body isn't able to keep up with the catabolic activity, that causes more degeneration of the joint. Any mechanical injury or mechanical force to the joint also causes degeneration, improper nutrition and genetics. So what are the current therapies which vets have today to treat osteoarthritis in India? So one of the leading uh, medications which vets are currently using are NSAIDs, that is meloxicam, carpofrin. Even supplementations are high in demand and are being used constantly. That is your high HA, your chondroitin, your glucosamine. One of the recent developments and recent uh, medications which have been uh, introduced in the market is your CBD oil and supplements. And uh, your physical therapy and your hydrotherapy are the other physical activities which are also 
considered hand in hand with these medication Ac acupuncture also is one of the uh, one of the method to use but this requires lot of expertise as you see the first two as i said nsaids they are uh, medications which are used for pain management but these give you just immediate relief it is not these medications don't work on the uh, on the causes of the osteoarthritis they don't stop the further regeneration of the joint whereas even cbd oil it is a good management for pain but its effects are still experimental physiotherapy and hydrotherapy are only physical activities which help in restoring the mobility of the joint again not not actually uh, dealing with the problems of your arthritic joint even acupuncture you need a lot of expertise in this uh, subject to perform these uh, methods on the dog so that brings us to pentos so what is pentos exactly pentos is made up of an active ingredient called as pentosan polysulfate sodium so pentosan polysulfate sodium is a semi synthetic polysulfated polysaccharide this was developed by swati pentos over 10 years ago and with the exp expertise of many international scientists we were able to develop this molecule and make it uh, in par with the originator so pentosan as a molecule is a uh, slightly heparin in nature that's why it works well for uh, dissolving the clots and reducing the inflammation to the joint this is derived from a plant source called as beetroot so bps is also commonly used as an oral formulation in humans for interstitial cystitis whereas it is an injectable drug to be treated as or for osteoarthritis in animals this is the only drug which comes under the dmoad that is your disease modifying osteoarthritic drug so let's come to the mechanism of action and how does this drug work exactly in your joint as you know a healthy joint consists of two bones each of its layer of the articular cartilage which helps uh, which protects the bones from uh, friction against each other so mostly arthritis is seen in synovial joints that is due to the uh, reduce or uh, due to this concentration of your synovial fluid and increased friction between the joints so how does this work so with oa we are taking we are talking particularly of your synovial joint the synovium is composed of loose connective tissue blood vessels and lymphatic vessels one of the main issues of oa is the progressive loss of this cartilage which means there's not much separating your bones maintaining a healthy joint of your articular cartilage is of the chondrocytes so chondrocytes plays an important role in this your chondrocytes help in uh, the in maintaining your proteoglycan and your type 1 collagen so when your chondrocytes reduce its activity because of proteolytic enzymes your proteoglycans are reduced in your synovial fluid proteoglycans are your mucoproteins so these are your they consist they are formed of glycoaminoglycans which consist contains unbranched molecules of repeating disaccharides and sulfates hyaluronic acid is the only molecule of proteoglycan which doesn't contain a sulfate group rest all your dermatin sulfate your chondroitin sulfate your heparin sulfate and your keratin sulfate these all constitute of your uh, poly uh, proteoglycans so the major role of uh, osteoarthritic joint is a loss you see a loss of your proteoglycans so when there is loss of your proteoglycans in the synovial fluid there is loss of elasticity and loss of ha and decrease in its concentration and viscosity that causes your synovial fluid to decrease and increase your friction between the joints so to avoid avoid that that's where we put in our role of uh, pentosan polysulfate sodium so what does pentosan do pentosan inhibits these proteolytic enzymes and decreases the loss of your proteoglycans in in the bargain you're increasing your anabolic activity and decreasing your catabolic activity it inhibits the destructive enzymes like interleukin 1 interleukin 6 your tnf alpha these enzymes immediately rush to the site of the joint due to the breakdown continuous breakdown of your chondrocytes due to this inflammatory response there is constant uh constant uh, inflammation and pain in the joint so once this uh, enzyme is inhibited you are reducing the inflammation of that joint it due, next point is 
PPS also is heparin in nature. Due to the slight heparin-like nature property, it helps in breakdown of the clots and increases the blood flow of the joint. That way, you're increasing the nutrition to your joint and uh, developing favorable conditions to the joint. It also increases your HA concentration. That's, that's how your elasticity and your viscosity of your synovial fluid increases. This in turn, due to all the favorable conditions of a healthy joint available for your uh, synovial joint, it initiates your chondrocyte regeneration. That's your anabolic activity increases. So as you can see over here, this, is your, this shows the entire uh, mechanism of how there is constant breakdown of your cartilage and it's a repetitive process. Unless we ta tackle the points which, which can stop the breakdown, there is no way that your arthritis can reverse. So that's how you can see at the asterisk marked areas, that's where your PPS works. So it works on reducing your cartilage breakdown it works on not non-activation of your leukocyte, that is your immune responses. It works on your proto, uh, pro coagulant activity, and it works on your inflamed synovial and abnormal sinusite and decrease of your hyaluron size. So in turn, it works on all the factors which are progressing your osteoarthritic joint. So what? How do you describe this product? So this product, Pentosan, is a canine injection. It, it comes in a stale, uh, sterile pale yellow color solution, and it aids for the treatment of non-infectious inflammatory joints. So as I said, this, can, this cannot be used for septic joints, and it should be purely used for non-infectious joints. What is, what, it is composed of 100 mg per ml vial, and it's a 2 ml vial. The dosage for canines is 3 mg per kg body weight, Sub, and it's given subcutaneously. This drug is advised to be given once a week for four weeks. This is a compulsory course. So the course is of four weeks. It can be repeated after a one month rest period, depending on the severity of the case. There is not more than three courses a year should be given to the dog. So as you see below, so when you, if the dog suffers from mild symptoms of OA, one course every 12 months should sustain the dog and can be repeated as a yearly course. If it's a more moderate case of OA, then two courses should be administered. And for chronic and severe cases, we advise to administer three courses. So what are the indications this drug can be used for? As I said, it can be used for osteoarthritic and trauma traumatic joint uh, diseases, your osteochondroises, your degenerative cartilaginous diseases, your musculoskeletal disease and your periarticular inflammation. So these are the, so it can be used in any of the conditions which doesn't involve a septic infection. So what are the key benefits of Pentos as compared to the other drugs available in the market? One, it's an anti, it has anti-inflammatory action. Second, it is fibrinolactic activity, chondroprotective agent, reverses the effects of osteoarthritis, inhibition of your destructive enzymes, and stimulation of your hyaluronic acid. So as you see, it's a package of everything. It's not, it doesn't, uh, it, it covers six different aspects in one drug. So you don't have to uh, rely on uh, three, four different sources of, for, for the action of it. What are the key uh, important uh, things you need to keep in mind while ad, uh, administering this drug is that Pentosan is a completely safe drug since it is plant-based origin. And till date, we have, not report, we have not been reported with any side effects to the body. But in case of patients who are hypersensitive to the drug, they can show mild uh, cases of gastric sensitivity. The other precautions which we need to take while administering this drug is that we do not use this drug for the treatment of septic arthritis. So in those cases, appropriate antibiotic or antimicrobial treatment should be administered. We do not use it in dogs with advanced liver or kidney impairment or any evidence of infection. We do not use it in dogs with blood disorders or coagulation disorders. As I said, since Pentosan has hip, slight heparin like nature properties, we do not advise in administering dogs with blood disorders. Pentosan 
polysulfate is also and also has anticoagulant activity thus we don't even adv we advise not to give during perioperative period that is one week before and one week after the surgery we we also don't uh, uh, we don't advise in uh, beginning this course in skeletally immature dogs so we do advise once the dog is completely mature and its gro growth plates have matured that you can start administering this drug we do not administer this drug even in pregnant or lactating bitches because the drug uh, the molecule has a possibility of crossing the placental barrier so what are the key usps of this drug one is completely safe and no reported side effects two it is anti inflammatory action helps in reducing the joint inflammation and pain three chondroprotective activity and inhibition of proteoglycans helps in terminating further destruction of the joint and gives it favorable conditions for the joint to regenerate the damaged tissue fourth stimulation of your hyaluronic acid increasing the formation of your synovial fluid increasing its concentration and viscosity thus hydrating and lubricating the joint to its optimum level fourth technically the product shows a long term effect and it's for the treatment so we have had many cases where the drug was administered for one course and the dog didn't require readministration for a period of 1 to 2 years after that so it depends from case to case as we believe we believe in re relieving pain restoring function and renewing hope so we are here to break the pain cycle in canines while pain as we know is inevitable but suffering is not so please do contact vetina uh, to acquire this drug we are really happy to join hands with vetina for this novel uh, drug and share this platform with them thank you thank you thank you so much dr shiva for such a wonderful session i hope people do understand what exactly the molecule is uh, we cr create a, created a just wonderful video to make you more insight about the product so just will share it's just two and a half minute video to you which make you people more understand what exactly the video is Osteoarthritis is a leading joint degenerative disorder seen in dogs which show unexplained pains in their limbs and swelling of joints. You may often find them whimpering in pain every time they try to jump, run or walk. Why does this happen? This condition causes long-term degeneration of joints including many tissues like cartilage, bones of the joint, joint capsule and synovial fluid. This Osteoarthritis for your dogs by Vetina. This module is classified under the DMOAD Disease Modifying Osteoarthritis. From a plant source called beechwood, most commonly used as an injectable drug to treat osteoarthritis in animals. The pentorse works by acting at multiple junctions in the interconnected pathway of pathological changes occurring in the articular cartilage, subchondral bone, joint synovial lining and the synovial fluid in an osteoarthritic joint. Degeneration takes place when mechanical factors act on healthy cartilage and subchondral bone causing the release of proteolytic enzymes that break down the healthy tissues as well as cause the synovium to get inflamed which leads to an abnormal synoviocyte metabolism decreased hyaluronic size and reduced viscosity and lubrication of the joint finally leading to the breakdown of the cartilage and damaging of the bone the damaged bone further causes synovitis thus repeating the same process again and again until the complete loss of bone or joint function what pentorse does is that it acts at a number of points simultaneously breaking the chain and creating favorable conditions for bone regeneration activities it inhibits the proteolytic enzymes and decreases the loss of proteoglycans as well as inhibits destructive enzymes like interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tnf alpha Due to exhibiting partial heparin like qualities it also breaks down blood clots to increase blood flow to the joint 
which cures bone necrosis and sclerosis and also reduces inflammation and pain and finally increases the hyaluronic acid concentration in synovial fluid leading to increased viscosity and lubrication in the joints thus initiating chondrocyte regeneration of the damaged cartilage and bone this pentors works on many types of conditions including osteoarthritis and traumatic joint diseases osteochondrosis desiccans degenerative cartilaginous joint diseases musculoskeletal disorders and periarticular inflammation plus it has been proven to have zero side effects due to its origin being plant based thus being a completely safe drug for the dog juice pentors relieve pain restore function renew hope for inquiry call or write to us on 9120674458 9175065622 email id customer service at vetina.com visit us at www.vetina.com Thank you so much to all of you people. This is the wonderful product which you have introduced. And now it's time to have a session of uh, Lucky Draw. So I request to Dr. Seema. She would be taking care of this Lucky Draw contest. Let's see who would be the first winner. Seema, can you please start it? I think uh, question and answers for Dr. Sheba uh, are still to be done. Okay. Because there are uh, questions from uh, many people. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Should we go ahead? Yeah. Dr. Shiva? Please, please. Yeah. Uh, can I just... uh, the first question is from Dr. Nirupama. She is saying how, how long Pendosan will take to his. So, yeah, so it depends from case to case. As I said, if it's a mild case, it can take just one course. If it's a moderate case, it might take two courses of injection. Or if it's a very severe case, you would have to keep repeating it for at least three courses. So it depends from case to case. And uh, you can uh, review it according to the dog's condition. But mostly, uh, so we say the one first course is a compulsory course. So you wouldn't, even in some dogs, like the milder cases, you will see an immediate effect after two injections. But if it's a severe case, it could take the second course to actually show you the results. Okay, so uh, is Pentos safe in uh, geriatric dogs? This is a question from, uh, the name is not there of the doctor. Yes, so yeah, it is for them primarily. <laughs> so since it does progress really faster in older dogs, so that's how, that's the main purpose of the drug. So it does give them quite a lot of relief. And it's not a temporary relief. We look at it at a long-term relief. Uh, same from the same uh, participant. The question is: Is it uh, is Pentos available in in India? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Vetina is there to provide you. Uh, yes, you can we contact are... me or Doctor uh, <laughs> Mr. Vikas for the same. So we are there to help you out. Uh, the Thank next you. question is: Is the oral presentation available or only the parenteral? <laughs> only the injectable. So the so we do have the oral one, but that is for humans. It's not yet uh, permitted for veterinary use. Uh, so right now it's just the uh, injectable for. So it is used subcutaneously. Thank you, Dr. Shikan, for this question. Uh, next question is from Dr. Ratna uh, Ratnakar. That can it be used in older patients? Yes. Yes. Definitely. So that's what I said. There are only a few uh, conditions which you need to keep in mind. So in case there is a advanced kidney or liver damage due to septic uh, conditions, in those cases, we uh, avoid. But primarily, if there's no other, uh, other ailments which the dog is suffering from, we, this drug is definitely for them only. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Icha is asking, why can't we inject it intra-articular? Uh, in case you have expertise, you can definitely go ahead with that. So we use, we uh, recommend it subcutaneously because that is something which is comfortable by all veterinarians. Intra-articularly is also recommended in case you have expertise in that field. So it is okay to give it, but 
uh, please maintain the dose of 3 mg per kg body weight per injection it shouldn't exceed the dose yeah there's one more question uh, from anonymous uh, uh, like uh, can we use pentos and strike plus joint supplement together so uh, definitely uh, we... <laughs> yes dr shiva yeah. yes yes so please. <laughs> yeah yeah so we do encourage uh, supplementation also uh, simultaneously it just acts as a catalyst to both the drugs so you will obviously see enhanced effects with the uh, supplementation but we do not recommend to uh, pentos to be given with any other nsaid so if you put your dog on and put your dog on pentosan uh, we would recommend you to stop all your other nsaid medications being given to the dog you would only recommend your supplementations like your ha chondroitin sulfate and all that but no other medication of uh, nsaids yeah uh, there's another drug, uh, question is this drug used in human also human arthritis oh uh, that is still experimental there is a company in australia who is working on it and they have reached their stage 3 clinical trials with it so hopefully yes it would be out in the market soon <laughs> so we would also definitely work on the same for humans also yeah now for the cost of the product you can contact mr vikas definitely vetina <laughs> is there to help you out yes uh, how long can the injection be stored after the pricks this is a question from dr shridhar yeah so this is a multi dose vial so there is not an issue uh, so we recommend uh, two months also uh, it can be kept as long as the temperature it is a, a temperature controlled product so it has to be maintained at 2 to 8 degrees as long as the drug is maintained at the cold chain level so the drug is uh, stable enough so how do we know that the therapy has to be stopped so you definitely see the dog happier and jumping and without pain so uh, i think see so it is an annual thing as i said so it can be used as a preventive and as a cure also so uh, in case of the dog showing milder symptoms and you see that the, there is lesser stiffness of your joint and there is no inflammation or pain you can uh, you can suggest that the therapy should be stopped and then give it at an uh, after a year once the dog is showing slight symptoms so as i said if even if it's a severe case after your three courses you will see that for more than a year the dog wouldn't require pentosan so once the dog starts showing mild symptoms you could then administer one course of the four injections this drug can also be used as a preventive so as we know in larger breeds they are really prone to osteoarthritis in later stages of their life so after a certain age like around 6 to 7 years you can make it a annual injectable a uh, course like a four injection course on an annual basis just as a preventive also yeah uh, any precautions as to uh, its parent like activities also any side effects documented in that regards yeah so it is very mild so it's like not uh, very severe heparin properties in it so due to its mild properties we suggest not in blood disorders as i said or any or during pre peri operative uh, time so not one week or before or after the surgery so that's the only thing otherwise uh, it wouldn't lead uh, or even in uh, tumors which are bleeding or anything so we don't suggest in giving in those drugs rest all it's completely safe it wouldn't cause excessive bleeding as such thank you dr satpute for this question Ne- next question is uh, uh, dr harshita is it necessary to prescribe supplements along with pentos not at all not at all so what happens usually uh, because dogs are already on supplementation right now because that is the only uh, medication available because right now they would be on nsaids and supplementation we say that if if the vet or the owner wants to continue we are, they they can do so but it's not a requirement you can completely put them off it and only be give, administering them pentos uh, from dr gk saxena the question is in severe cases how many days it should be repeated uh, it's the same so it's once a week only so we don't recommend a shorter course than that because the molecule works at its optimum level when you're giving the 3 mg per kg bo- body weight so uh, if you would shorten the duration that could lead to excessive amount of the molecule in the body so that's why uh, however the case, severe the case we recommend repeating the courses then shortening the duration of time 
Yeah, Dr. Sugan has asked that can we use this injection for cats? Uh, that is still uh, under clinical studies, but uh, there have been reports of few vets using it uh, uh, internationally, but uh, there is no uh, there's no documented uh, uh, studies done on it or approved studies. So we haven't uh, actually put it under our indications right now. It's just for canines, but surely we would uh, get in touch with uh, scientists to work on this and uh, like develop it as a newer indication for even cats. So there are a lot of vets which are using uh, pentosan even for idiopathic cystitis in cats. But still, as I said, these are not uh, documented or approved studies. So that is why we cannot uh, recommend it right now. Yeah, Dr. Shiva, one question uh, yes. by Dr. Muzi Fazli. Is there any possibilities of its use to reduce abnormal fibrosis tissue accumulation in soft tissue? Uh, that is uh, something which I would have to look into. Uh, I don't, I have not read on this thing. Mm -hmm. So I will definitely look into it and uh, answer on that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Muzi will we'll respond to you. We'll check it and we'll come back to you. Maybe we'll send a communication uh, for yes. the same, the question which you're asking. Yes. And yeah. a couple of people have raised their hand. Let, let, let us understand what they wanted to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. There's one. Uh, yeah, one, one more question. Do we need uh, to do blood profile before giving pentosan? Uh, not required unless the dog is suffering from any other uh, pre ailments, as I said. So, in case you think the dog is having some liver or kidney dysfunction, so then maybe a liver and kidney profile could be carried out to see the cause. If it's an infection or something, then maybe first treat the infection and the sepsis. And then, once the dog is healthier, then you start your pentosan course. Yeah. So Dr. Sarkute has again asked that if pain reoccurs, can uh, NSAID uh, be given? Is there any gap needs to be maintained? Uh, so uh, we would uh, recommend a, a gap of uh, maybe around a month after your pentosan because see, anyway, you would be uh, giving a four-course injection before you uh, understand it. So as I said, if it's a very severe case, even a four uh, four course, like a four injection course, wouldn't justify and give you that kind of a result like a mild case would give you in four injections. So I suggest for a severe case, at least give the molecule two courses of, of time to show you the results. Like, because I don't like pentosan as a molecule really works on the joint and I don't uh, see why it should be stopped just after one course. Because in severe cases, because of excessive damage, it does need longer time to repair and get it back to its favorable conditions. So maybe after your two course and still you're not happy with the results, then after a one month rest period, you could give the dog an insert. Okay, one last question. Mechanism, how Pentos works in case of cystitis? <laughs> So that works on the gag layer over there. So because of the constant breakdown of your gag layer, so pentosan, see, even proteoglycans are like gags. So that it increases your production of it. So because of the constant breakdown, pentosan inhibits the breakdown and uh, re restores your gag layer of your bladder. So that's the mechanism it works in your cystitis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shiva. Uh, I request to everybody, we have a wonderful technical brochures of this product, which we can share with you during the communication by the mail and other form of communication. So that will give you the complete insight about the product. And after this webinar, maybe by Monday onwards, we start sharing a more technical brochures and literature of this product, and which will certainly help you to understand what exactly the product is. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shiva. Thank you so much for asking such a wonderful question. Now it's time to be uh, start with the lucky draw session. So let's see who would be the luckiest person. Seema, can you please start it? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, please. <coughs> and there would be the fair, fair chances of winning because we have not fixed it as a complete online game. So we. Put so here we go. Let's yeah. see who the winner is. So, winner is uh, Samantha S. So, okay. yeah. So, we will, we will. Uh, the we, first winner. Yeah. Here, here there is one tricky thing. Yeah. 
-hmm. we will check uh, whether this uh, the doctor is there during the attendance has he attended the webinar or not <laughs> we will check that first and we go for the another name so the, the next name is dr suraj patel congratulations to both the winners one more name shima please note down these names sir huh? yeah yeah Dr. T. S. Uh, Logasri Shanmugam. So, congratulations to all the winners. So, one last name. So, two more names. Let's make it five. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, let's have a two more. Dr. Yeah. Suman B. S. Yes. So congratulations, Dr. Doctor. So, whosoever would be the winner, winner will send this uh, gift to your address. Yeah, we'll dispatch it, and will you will get it maybe next couple of days. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Priyanka Yadav. So we have five winners with us. Congratulations to all of them, and we look forward <coughs> to uh, see you in our next series of webinars. Yes, so, Mr. Prasad. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Before wrap up the thing, I would like to thank you all of you. to joining this web webinar and certainly we are getting a very overwhelming response from all of you people and which will encourage us to continue such kind of webinars in coming future so very soon we will be coming with another uh, orthopedic webinar with the help of eoads and with dr jha also we'll be intimated to you soon thank you thank you so much to all of you to be a part of such wonderful webinar thanks a lot to all of you people and winner we should uh, send the, their gift at their home address yeah Thank you, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jha, for to be a part of such wonderful webinar, and we can maintain this relation for a long run to talk more about well, orthopedic conferences in the, in the Indian vets. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much again, Bettina, for giving me a chance to share my knowledge uh, back home, and again, Shiba, great lecture there. Yeah. So, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jha. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Shiba. Thank you, Dr. Jha. Thank you, Dr. Shiba. Thank you so much, everyone. It was a wonderful webinar. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank, thank you. you to all the participants. And with this, I announce the webinar is over. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening.